Equities had a big week lower and higher as we saw a range that rivaled only one other date in 2019. Back in June, we saw this as the second widest range, about 140 handles in the E-mini S&P this week as we saw the markets really sell off as month end came. And then we had the, the weak negative data that came out midweek, followed by maybe some more dovishness from the Fed. And then Intel helped us recoup a lot of those losses. So at this point, we're going to settle down on the week from last Friday. However, not that much considering where we traded below 2900, which I think many thought would be a sign that things were going to turn south for equities, at least in the short term. And the short term really only ended up being a couple of days. We saw some big significant sell offs after month and quarter end. Then things reversed very quickly as the data turned south and the Fed had to kind of step up and expectations for Fed cuts went way through the roof. We're nearing 100 percent for a Fed cut in October, which before it was right around 50 50 at this time last week. So things are moving and moving very quickly in equity land. And if you look at the VIX index, it too had a big pop higher as equity sold off the beginning of the week. However, we'll end the week near unchanged, really kind of a ho-hum week for, for the volatility index, given the fact that we saw the equities rally back into that old range and that comfort zone north of 2900, nearing 2950. And at this point, the VIX index is more of a broad indicator, backward looking. You sort of see where we were and how we traded, but the VIX index, like it used to be more of a forward looking guidance when we'd see VIX index bid, we knew that something was coming. However, we don't see that anymore. It's so short lived on those bids that really it's a measurement to look at after the fact. And lastly, let's look at what is going to move equities here. Now that we're past employment, we had the poor manufacturing and production data. What is going to move equities? Well, we go back to what we've been looking at for the last, I don't know, six to eight months. Trade deals with China, Fed policy, what's going on in Europe, Brexit, a lot of things, a lot of risk off possibilities. However, any one of those could shift very quickly. And if we see some kind of deal, positive news coming through with China, if we see things in Washington fizzle out, and we get away from that, all the negative talk we've been hearing about this week, I think maybe equities can get back on the track towards higher levels if the numbers support it and if the earnings are there. Uh, obviously, there's going to be some major, major activity coming around the Fed meeting in October when previously we were only expecting maybe 50 50 odds of a rate cut in October, but now we're expecting almost 100% chance. So that could really help equities. They love a good rate cut. Obviously, they love a Fed that loves what it's doing or knows what it's doing. And at this point, the Fed remains very unclear, which is scary for equities. But if they can lay out a plan that says, yeah, we're going to cut in October and possibly again in December, and then we're going to have maybe some different policy issue changes, equities may like that. And equities may look for a move higher uh, towards those all-time highs that we nearly got to just uh, about a month ago. So at this point right now, getting back north of 2900, nearing 2950 is significant in that it takes us back into the old range, takes away any of that negative uh, momentum that could have built up on the move that we saw earlier this week. And now we wait and see what the Fed does. And the, Fed will be, or the equity markets will be very tied to what the Fed does and what the Fed says. And at this point, the Fed is saying some, but they're being supportive of being more hawkish. However, the markets are telling them cuts are coming very aggressively and the two are going to converge at the October FOMC. We'll see what happens with equities.